Guys, today, bit of a final pre-release video on Xianyun where I will show you an updated build guide and also an estimation of how impactful she will be in the meta of Genshin. First of all, let me summarize how good her kit can be. Xianyun is a 5-star animo healer that comes with very interesting mechanics that make her a pretty unique support. The uniqueness comes from her elemental burst, which other than healing the whole team will also allow active characters to jump high enough to be able to plunge. By itself, this is already pretty Pretty interesting, because uh, basically all Genshin characters have high enough plunge multipliers to make this mechanic interesting. But Xianyun makes this even more interesting by providing buffs of her own to these plunge attacks. Specifically, each of the plunges buffed by Xianyun's elemental burst will also receive a pretty big flat damage bonus that scales off Xianyun's attack. This flat damage bonus will only affect one target every plunge. So, for example, if you attack two or three opponents with a plunge, only one enemy will receive the increased damage. I get this might sound a bit meh, single target buffing, but uh, the buff she provides is high enough for it to be worth it regardless. On top of that, the plunges will also receive a crit rate increase that scales up depending on how many opponents the plunge hits, so it works better in AoE. Pretty weird dynamic here, like uh, the first buff works better in single target, while the second works better in AoE, whatever, let them cook. <laughs> The elemental burst will last for 16 seconds, but you will only be able to plunge 8 times thanks to its effects, so it has a limit. The big question here is, are these buffs big enough to force this plunge playstyle onto characters that don't typically plunge? I will answer this question more specifically in the part of the video where I talk about her best teams, but for now just know that her buffs alone can add even 300,000 damage per rotation, so it's very significant. For the rest, from a meta perspective, there isn't really anything else that's unique in her kit that's worth mentioning. Like, in combat, her elemental skill pretty much just serves the purpose of general generating particles for her since the damage output of this skill is really not significant. For exploration it is a bit useful because it allows her to leap forward, so it's nice, but uh, it's not quite the flight ability we were all expecting from her, so it leaves a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Before I move on, let me remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet and you enjoy my content because it really helps me notice your support. In terms of themes, the logical assumption would be that she mainly benefits those characters that already want to plunge by themselves, like Xiao and Gaming. And in a way, it's kinda true, because it's not like you're going to force this playstyle on a character like Nuvilet just because Xianyun makes it good. But if you can implement plunges into a character's rotation without disrupting the rest of his moves, then it can be really good. The cool thing about jumps is that even without plunges, they're commonly used as animation cancels for some characters, like Hu Tao. The most popular way to cancel a charge attack at Constellation Zero is jumping, because dashing just consumes too much stamina. So, for example, with Hu Tao and Xianyun, you can use a charge attack with Hu Tao, then jump, and then plunge. And it's good to do this because when they're buffed by Xianyun, Hu Tao's plunges are much, much stronger than her charge attacks. As a trade-off, they're kinda slower than charge attacks, so if for example without Xianyun you would be able to use 8 or 9 charge attacks per rotation with Hu Tao's constellation Zero, with Xianyun you will be able to just use 5 or 6 and then plunges. The full team would be Hu Tao, Xianyun, Fiorina and Yanan, and uh, just in theory, in terms of damage, it looks much better than other Hu of Urina variants. A similar case is for Brizzly that can use jumps to cancel his charge attacks during his rotations. Even though he doesn't buff plunges specifically through his passive or elemental skill, it's still very good because what Xianyun provides in terms of buffing is significant enough that it can add to his rotations. I've also tried to look at more atypical uses like uh, putting Xianyun on quicken teams, specifically the Yai quicken teams, and uh, plunge with Yai a bit. In terms of overall damage, the plunges are not contributing to a lot for Yae, but it's nice still, and uh, also Xianyun is a healer, so she's a defensive option for the team, and she allows you to bring Fischl, Nahida, and Yae. Other variants will be Yae, Fischl, Yae, or Baiju and Kazua, Yae, Fischl, Nahida, and Zhongli, and this one looks pretty good in comparison. For the rest, since the true potential of plunge attacks comes from the combination of them having high damage output and no internal cooldown, so they can trigger reactions at every hit, they work very well in vaporides and melts. 
health teams. And it's extremely impressive even for characters that you wouldn't assume to be good in a carry role like Bennett. You need a constellation 6 Bennett to do this because that's what allows him to get the pyro infusion from his elemental burst, but if you have that, it's very strong. And this is entirely coming from Xian Yun, like uh, she's enabling this playstyle for him by herself and it's very good because the plunge attacks end up doing even 700,000 damage per rotation at free to play investment for Bennett, which is huge. Funnily enough, even if you just bring Bennett as a support on the team, it's still good, like uh, if you put a random carry like uh, Razor, it's still good as long as he has pyro infusion and can vape with plunge attacks. I've also looked at even weirder uses like uh, Candace carry with plunges and uh, Candace is extremely weak in the meta of Genshin especially when used in such a role but with Xian Yun it looks pretty nice like uh, it doesn't look extremely impressive but still nice for a character like Candace. I have looked at Chong Yun in the past and it still looked great for the same exact reason. Look, the bottom line here is that the plunge playstyle is very strong as a baseline and uh, it allows you to reach pretty high numbers by default. If you combine this with the fact that she also heals the team, then she ends up enabling Furina on a lot of her compositions as well and their situation in the meta looks pretty solid. Of course, other than all of these themes I've talked about, she ends up being the best in slot for very strong plunge based characters like uh, Gaming, Xiao, Diluc that isn't the a punch character but has a very high punch multiplier. I just haven't focused a lot on this for this video specifically because I felt like it was kinda obvious already and I also felt like uh, many people thought she is useless outside of these popular teams but I don't think that's true at all. In terms of builds, the main thing you have to understand is that on most of the teams I've talked about, she really needs a lot of energy recharge. Basically, on any team that doesn't include multiple Animon units, she will need more than 200 energy recharge. So, in those situations, unless you have extreme substats luck, you will need an energy recharge weapon and energy recharge sands on her. For the rest, you really only need to focus on a attack stats to maximize her passive buffs and increase her healing as much as possible. So, for the weapons, options that provide both of these stats are great. For example, Oddsworn Eye, a free to play option, is great because it provides energy recharge through the passive and attack through the secondary stat. Alternatively, for the cheap options, weapons that provide good utility are also fine. For example, Favonius Codex, Hakushin Ring, Thrilling Tales. Of course, her signature is the best in slot for basically all scenarios scenarios because it's a great weapon that provides a lot of attack and also buff plunges for the team and on top of that energy refund for Shen Yun specifically so it's great. But still, in terms of actual impact there isn't a big difference between the signature and the cheap options so I wouldn't really say it's worth it. In terms of artifact sets I would say just go for the very distant Venera as a general option because of course when she can swirl the element of the main carry the impact is massive and even when and she can't, so for example on Vaporite's teams where you have a pyro damage dealer as the main carry and Furina as a sub DPS, so a situation where swirling just hydro can be very common, it's still pretty much on par with the other alternative options like uh, the clam set, the days pass set and so on. So basically don't sweat it and just farm the very decent Venator for her, in my opinion. I just want to quickly discuss her constellations, specifically the first two. Her constellation 2 is real strong because it basically doubles the impact of her flat damage bonus passive, so the buff will simply be doubled. It's really a huge damage increase, like uh, in the best case scenario, it's basically as impactful as Nahida's constellation two for her teams, so it goes without saying that this is insane. Obviously, it's not a must have, it's just a damage increase overall, but uh, if you really like the idea of plunging with your characters, this can be a big impact for your box. Overall, Xian Yun is quite great. She enables a playstyle that is very solid for a lot of characters and she also has potential to grow in the future as new characters come out. And with this, I'm done for today. Peace.